Well, here we are. It is Friday. Let's see here. January 27th, 2022. And as all of you know, this is the weekly video. We do these every Friday. We talk about what's been going on in the Asian art market during the last week, auctions that have taken place, what's happening at Sotheby's and Christie's and on eBay and live auctioneers through the global uh, our global member pages and uh, so forth. And uh, it's been a busy week. There's been a lot going on. As some of you know, we uh, or you probably may have already seen it. We did a uh, review of of, uh, Americana Week and the Cohen and Cohen sale of Chinese export porcelain. Uh, the sale did really well. Uh, I was very, very pleased for them and I was pleased for the market. There was a lot of interest in the material. It looked like about 90% of it sold. The prices were, were strong uh, within the estimates or above. And uh, overall, it did well. And the American furniture market seems to have a, a bit of life in the old girl yet. And uh, things are going along pretty well over there. So if you see American furniture and European furniture seeing an uptick in interest among collectors and people furnishing their homes, you're going to see an uptick in the values of Chinese export wares. Uh, which have been sort of in the doldrums for the last uh, uh, 20 years or so. So uh, uh, that was all good. One of the things I wanted also to mention was that this week I did an, uh, an interview with um, uh, David Harper. He's uh, many. Some of you probably subscribe to his channel. He's a British dealer. He's been a dealer for a long, 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 long time. He's been on the BBC. Uh, he's been on numerous shows about antiques and art. Uh, and he's an absolutely great guy absolutely great guy um how i met him was i i, I sent him an, i'd watched one of his videos and I, I dropped him an email and said gee you know uh, like like your work i like what you do he's, he's very down to earth and how he talks about things and he he came back to me and said why don't we do some interviews and i'll interview you and talk about you know, what how i got into the business and and all that and my views on some things in the business and um i'm going to be interviewing him next week and you'll see it here on my channel Channel. So we're doing sort of a back and forth and uh, see how that goes. Uh, but he's, he's a, a very good uh, speaker. Uh, he's very insightful. And uh, I, I totally enjoyed uh, chatting with him. I really did. Uh, we talked a bit before the video and a bit after. And uh, he's just a, a really good guy. He's just he's one of the good guys. So I'm going to put a link in to his channel below here down down at the bottom. Down under here, you'll you'll see it underneath this week's video, and uh, go over and check out his uh, his YouTube channel. Subscribe to him. Um, I think it's worth it. I think he gets into some interesting things. Uh, he doesn't talk only. Uh, he talks occasionally about Asian art, but he talks about the antique market in general, which is very important. Uh, he's very knowledgeable. He knows a lot. He, he watches and uh, antique furniture. Uh, you know, automobiles. He's a. I think he's a bit of a. From what I've seen, he's a bit of a uh, antique uh, old car buff. And uh, just an interesting guy. He lives. He lives outside of London. He lives up. He has a, a home in London, but he he lives up in the countryside north of London. And um, uh, just a, a nice guy. So uh, uh, check out the, the the video he he and I did together. And uh, um, I hope you find it entertaining a little. And um, uh, listen, l subscribe to his channel. I, th I think I think you'll enjoy it. It's, he's worth it. He does he does quite a few videos. He does seems to do two or three a week. Um, in, in addition to doing everything else, so bravo on him. All right, so so that's that. All right, now uh, let's see what's going on. Oh, um, the Cohen and Cohen sale, uh, as I mentioned, uh, did really really well. And uh, if you uh, want to go over to Bottoms and, and and run through it, check out the prices, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And like I said, we did a video on it yesterday, and we went through a number of the pieces as examples to show how they did. And uh, overall, it was it was they should be very very pleased, very very pleased. It was an interesting auction, great things, and uh, good prices. All right, now, uh, what else is going on? Oh, uh, Global Pages uh, have been updated again. Um, they've updated them four times, five times this week, as a matter of fact, because a lot of stuff sold and a lot of new auctions appeared. Um, and I'm, just a couple of things that popped up to sort of, uh, maybe if, if you don't subscribe, um, it might get you to get, get some interest out of you to subscribe. Uh, it's very inexpensive. It's $4 a month to join the uh, Global Pages, but it, 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 it's how we uh, pay for uh, doing it all. So it, it's, it's, it's a pretty good deal. Um, one of the things that popped up this week is this, and I've contacted them. I'm awaiting, I'm awaiting pictures of the bottom of this vase, this, this beautiful Celadon. Uh, it, it appears to be an 18th century 
country example. It's got a very dark brown foot rim down there, that very dark brown dressing. And uh, usually you see that on 18th century pieces. Uh, but for some reason, they didn't provide any secondary shots. I don't understand why auctioneers don't do that. They know they're going to get called. They know they're going to have inquiries, people that want to see the rest of the piece. And um, if you're an auctioneer and you do not include more than a primary shot, um, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. You're wasting your time. And this auction house, you know, the Morningstar Auction E Group, uh, I don't know much about them, uh, but this is a nice looking pot. And uh, the estimate is about right. It could bring more than that. It could bring 3000 But uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful example. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was this. this. This also popped up this week, and this is on the U.S. page. Um, on global global members is this very rare um, Cuban market uh, uh, plate. It's a, part of a set. It's inscribed as a crown. This is for the governor of Cuba in the 1840s um, and, and the Marquis de Almendares. And uh, I've only seen, uh, I think I've seen maybe one other of these over the years or two of them. Uh, they're very rare uh, uh, They in, in beautiful quality. And if you're interested in unusual export wares, high, very unusual, very rare. We see export wares, armorial wares, things that were sent to Europe fairly often. And they're, of course, beautiful. But this is a set that was made later during the 19th century and made for Cuba. So who knew? So if you're, if you're of Cuban heritage, you might be interested in that. All right, now over to this. This is the, uh, uh, the other thing that popped up this week. These are just the things that you're going to see on the global pages. Uh, every week we have interesting stuff like this. But this is a, a fascinating thing. This is a, a, a black and gilt lacquer stacking uh, box set. And it has its original case that was made to ship it during the China trade. It's an early, they have a date as late 18th century. I think it might be a little after that, but not much. I, th I thought this was more likely made around 1800 to 1820, but uh, they, they, they have a date of 1790. Now they bought it from Jeremy Limited in England. He's a very, he's, out, he's no longer there. He's out of business now, but he was in business from the 1940s up until the 19, uh, up, up until around 2000, I guess. So nearly 60 years. Um, and uh, this is a really interesting piece of uh, export wear. It's about it's about 30 inches tall, 29 inches tall or so. And it and when they when they made these, they they fitted it into this box for shipping. A wonderful box. And these boxes, uh, you occasionally see these pagodas in museums. You don't see them generally in households. Um, and, and there it is, freestanding. And they've actually included pictures of it in the house, but uh, where it was. But there's the box. Beautiful patina, and this is how they did it. And then they lined it with that green cotton um, to pad it and so forth. And I'm sure these are all, um, you know, pillowed, filled with something to keep it from getting scratched. And I, I think it's just a, a great opportunity. If you're a Chinese export buyer, this is something um, you, you might want to chase hard. Uh, because you don't see these very often. This is a, a very rare bird. And uh, interestingly, it looks an awful lot like a, 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 like a, a clock that they, sell in, they sold in America in the late 18th and early 19th century made by Simon Willard. Uh, they call them lighthouse clocks. And this is a very similar shape. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing how similar it is. And uh, there it is in the room, in the house that it was in. Not sure I'm crazy about the wallpaper, but uh, the object is nice. There it is up there, and he's got, the, whoever this is, he's got a wonderful Beijing glass collection, uh, some nice 18th century and late Ming. There's a Swato plate there, more 18th century porcelains and so forth. And, and there's the box. He put, he put he displays the box underneath the uh, Chinese etagere, Chinese, Chinese Chippendale etagere, uh, with a couple of, look like the Han Dynasty geese. Uh, but at any rate, uh, that that's the piece that's the house it was in and there's another picture of the room and so forth uh it is estimated at six uh three to five thousand dollars which i think is very reasonable this is extremely rare thing and uh, if it brings seven to ten thousand don't be surprised i'm 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 hoping maybe an institutional want to buy this this is something that a museum should have the pbd essex museum in salem maybe uh something like that because this is, this is unusual and i don't think they have one of these uh, but if you want to own one, 
go after it. This is worth getting. All right. Now, uh, what else is going on here? Um, yeah, the rest of the pages are uh, the global pages. Just just sort of wrap it up. The Goldfield auction, which many of you have been watching, uh, is coming up in, a, in just uh, what in in uh, about a day and a half from now. And uh, in this sale, also in another sale, this this popped up this week. As you may recall, a few weeks ago, we were talking about a pair of moon flasks that went to a Christie sale. They were 10 or 11 inches tall, and they ended up selling for about $6,500. And we talked about them because the quality of them was so good. And uh, in that video, I mentioned that some of these, these moon flasks, and many of you know this, you know, get very big. They can be, you know, eight or 10 inches tall, and they can also be up in the 20 inch area, over 20 inches even, but 19 to 23 inches, somewhere in there. And um, they, they don't turn up very often. Well, <laughs> here's a pair of them. And these are 19, 20 inches tall with very unusual decoration. These are late Qing examples uh, made during the second half, probably or the mid 19th century, second half of the 19th century, but stupendous quality and very unusually colored. And this is something you often see in Chinese export wares and Chinese porcelains that are in French collections. They have a little something different. They have, the, China, the French taste comes through and um, they, they, sometimes you find unusual, they, they, they gravitate towards unusual colors, unusual layouts, um, a very sophisticated uh, a palette. And uh, here you have this beautiful sort of a cocoa bronze color background, which is uh, really unusual with Famille Rose decoration on top of it. And then they have these very nice bats um, serving as handles on the upper section. Uh, these are, the, in the coloration, this uh, ruby red uh, sort of uh, ground that they've worked in to, uh, around them, and then covered with more enamels and vines and peaches and so forth. Just very, very nice looking uh, vase. And on the other side of it, the reverse of it is this, it's a phoenix pattern. Um, which is beautifully done, just absolutely beautiful. So you, you could you could you could have one facing one way, one facing the other. Um, have them, and they are a, a mirrored pair. So um, you don't have so you have a either, that makes them even more desirable. And they're they're sort of mirrored on both sides. There are the bottoms, absolutely look right as rain to me. The estimate is uh, two to three thousand dollars. I think that's very low. Um, I suspect these will bring closer to. They could bring. They could bring eight to eight, eight, eight to nine thousand, um, uh, given the market for these right now. There's a lot of interest in moon flats because they're, they're, they display well. They look great on mantles. They look great on sideboards. They add color, um, and they're a very appealing shape. Moon flats are among some of the most appealing and most popular shapes in Chinese porcelain, and uh, there they are. So uh, check that out. All righty, and then over on uh, eBay, it was a good week. And there was a lot of stuff. I, as I mentioned last week, there's suddenly there's been an upsurge in material on eBay. And um, um, I don't know where it's all coming from, but it's coming from somewhere. And this past week, we, we had we had some, a number of good items on there. And as a matter of fact, this week, there's, a, there's even more. Um, uh, we, we found a, quite a few great things. Uh, to, to share this week. So when by the time you get to this page, if you subscribe to the newsletter page, um, it'll all be updated. And if you don't subscribe to the newsletter page, come come over to the newsletter on Bitamount, it's over here, and just click this, fill out the form, and as soon as we update the page on Friday, you'll get an email saying that it's been updated, and you can take a look and see what we found uh, to share with everybody. And uh, we've had some good things um, in, the, in the last week. And I wanna go through them because uh, the prices were excellent. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is this, and, and this sort of coincided with a, a video we did uh, on uh, the China trade and its relationship in East Africa um, uh, on, the, on the coastal community there who were, who were big traders um, uh, going back uh, to the Tang Dynasty. And as you know, uh, the Middle East, there was a lot of Chinese porcelain sent to the Middle East, to the Arab, the Muslim community, uh, the Top Kapi Museum, the Arable Shrine. And this also went all the way down um, below the Mediterranean area, down under the Indian Ocean, the east coast of Africa. And um, this is the kind of thing that you, you might have found in one of these houses. This is a really interesting plate. I liked it a lot. It had a crack in it. Uh, but it's uh, obviously for the, with the Arabic on it, uh, for the Middle Eastern market, not not terribly big. I think this was an eight inch plate, but very rare, 18th century. I don't think they dated it. I think they just called it Chinese export porcelain plate uh, for the Arabian market. Uh, eight and a quarter inches in diameter, but it's an 18th century plate. This is a nice old plate. There's the there's the foot rim. There's the back of it. 
Uh, looks absolutely fine. There's the decoration on it. And uh, in the end, it did pretty well. It brought $1,136. It was a good price. But uh, for the specialist collector, this was a nifty item. This was a rare thing. Uh, you've seen them, you see them occasionally, but you don't see them often. This is something you do not see very often. And uh, I, I was glad it did well because it deserved to. And it's, it's, it's good looking. All right. And other things that uh, uh, sold with this. This was nice. The antique coupe. Um, this is a seller in Southboro, Massachusetts, just on the other side from where I am. He had a nice pair of uh, Kung Chi blue and white plates. Um, and they had a little bit of wear here and there, but overall they were in really nice condition. Somebody got the pair for $281, $140 a, a piece. That's pretty good. And they were 11 inches in diameter. They weren't little saucers. These are good sized dinner plates, full size dinner plates, uh, and, and beautifully done. Beautifully done. And very, very uh, 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 high quality work all the way through so there you go and there was some kisi this was a kisi strip and, and I, thankfully they they did a nice thing here they 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 showed a couple of areas up close in the primary image and then there's the panel down here and if you buy kisi you've seen you've seen the similar patterns before um but they you know they and all these textiles these chinese silks textiles robes uh rank badges all this very collectible still um and these brought 300 this brought 327 dollars for one strip which is very good it wasn't that long ago that a strip like this would sell in an auction for you'd, you could buy four of them for maybe maybe a hundred dollars um and and now they're, they're obviously the prices have changed um from 25 or 30 dollars a panel to now 327 and some of them bring even more but this was a nice one the colors were nice and soft and it dated to the late Qing dynasty but good looking good looking and uh, then over here to this, the little terrine with the, with the handles on the ends, had the porringer type handles on the ends. I, I like this though. It was a small terrine, very nicely decorated, nice strong finial on top. They don't have to worry about knocking that off. And uh, delicately decorated, 18th century work. And uh, somebody bought this for $313, which I think is pretty reasonable. We talked about it last week. I liked it a lot. It was very nice quality. And uh, again, export wares are a relative bargain still to these days. All right, and then uh, this is the uh, Kangxi Memorial plate. Um, it had a hairline in it. That was all, and uh, and somebody somebody got a great deal on this. It's uh, it appears to be uh, uh, Kangxi period. Uh, somebody picked it up for two hundred and twenty-two dollars. This was from a seller over in the UK, NM nine six nine six. I don't know him, uh, but uh, that was a nice looking porcelain. And uh, as, you, as many of you know, uh, you know, uh, armorial wares for the English market are highly collectible and uh, very, you know, very much pursued in the market. And uh, this this was a nice example. And I, and I, I was a, a bit taken aback by how, how inexpensively it sold. Uh, there's a bunch of Chinese export wares coming up at uh, uh, Bronx. And I think you'll you'll see some fairly strong prices there. And whoever got this, good on you. You got a good buy. $222, not bad at all. All right, and then over to this. This was on there, the, the, the 19th century Femi Noir porcelain uh, faceted vase. An unusual vase, unusual form um, with these faceted bodies. They did them during the 19th century. Um, very nicely done though. This is a very, very nice vase. Uh, the bottom of it though, it tells you right away that this was a 19th century piece when it's done this way, it had been drilled as a lamp at one point, but the enamels were good. The enamels were nice and soft, um, very appealing. The blues, the greens, all this against the black background, very classic. And there's a slight iridescence in the glaze. Now, some people see that iridescence, and you can see it where I'm pointing right here. And they, they say, well, well, if it has the iridescence, it means it's Kang Shi. No, that is a myth. <laughs> I'm going to dissuade you of that right away. It's a clear glaze that they applied over the black, and it causes the iridescence, and they did it when they did the, uh, the revival pieces. There were very, 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 very few um, Femi Noir pieces. We've talked about it before. I'm going to repeat it. Uh, Kang Shi wears uh, with Femi Noir decoration, and they now know that uh, basically, you know, all of the Femi Noir Kang Shi pieces um, that were at one time thought all to be authentic, if they're over about 20 inches, they're they were they were re-enameled. Um, in other words, they scraped off the white enamel that where, the, where the black is now and filled it in with black later because there was a huge demand for Femi Noir in uh, Europe around the uh, turn of the century up into the 1930s. 
So the uh, Chinese potters were more than happy to um, <laughs> scrape all the white off and give people black. And um, they, they now know that none of them were decorated that way in the period. Smaller pieces were, but the big pieces weren't. And um, uh, the iridescent argument uh, is just mostly a big myth at any rate. Um, but this was a nice looking jar. It was beautifully decorated, you know, nice height, good size. I think it was 18 inches tall. And that's what drove the price. It was big. This wasn't a five or six inch vase. This was a 18 inch vase and it ended up selling for $2,950. Um, but it was beautiful, beautiful quality. And then this, the uh, Langyao Oxblood pear-shaped uh, pear vase. Uh, we talked about this last week because I just thought it was a nice example. Um, the bottom of it looked absolutely fine. Um, you know, late 18th century, you know, possibly early 19th, but I think it's probably 18th century, judging by the, the, the top and the, and the shape and so forth. And uh, everybody seemed to like it. And uh, as always, these monochromes are, are, for the last several years, have been very strong. This one brought $2,425, and it wasn't that big. It was only eight and a half inches tall. Some of them can be bigger. Some, as you've seen, you, some of you have seen them. They can be 12, 13, 14, 15 inches in height. This was a fairly small one, but it was in good shape. Had beautiful copper red glaze on it, oxblood glaze, and uh, was neatly trimmed and finished. So that all, all of that contributes to a stronger, stronger price. All right, and then over to this, the uh, 18th century style, sort of a Chin Lung uh, pattern, but done in the late 19th century. But uh, we, we talked about this because I thought the enameling on it was really top quality. This is very fine quality work. And these were, there, was a, there was a period in the late Qing dynasty when they did these, they did the um, Chan Chu Pings, the big pear shape, the bottle vases, and they did these in this, using, using this pattern and variations on this pattern with deer. And uh, the deer pattern has always been very, very popular in China. It's like the peach pattern, um, always popular. Uh, and this one it was very nicely decorated and it presented a beautiful scene, good use of negative space. Uh, you, have, you have the Ling Bai, the fungi growing up around here. You have clouds, uh, peaches coming off the trees, spotted deer, unspotted deer, the whole bit. You had everything on this plate and it was big. And there's the back of it and uh, very typical of uh, 19th century Qing wares with just a, a couple of quickly drawn and red bamboo trees. And then you have this slightly rough foot, um, which is very typical of that period. But this plate was pretty big. It was 40 centimeters in diameter. So it was, it was right up there as far as uh, size go, about 16, 17 inches, uh, 18 inches. And uh, it brought $2,751. And that, that, that tells you how popular this pattern is. Now they made copies and they're making copies of these today and they're making copies of the Chan Chu Pings, the vases themselves that were so popular. So you gotta be very careful. But uh, this one was absolutely fine and um, it did great. It brought a good price. <clears throat> and then over to this, this the boxwood, uh, uh, they called it a medicine lady um, uh, from um, a, a seller in the UK. And we talked about this last week because I thought the carving on this was like a little gem. Just very nicely done, beautifully polished, great facial expression. I like the face on, on the figure. Uh, nice details about the eyes, the nose, the cheeks are puffy, uh, the ears are beautifully done, the hairline is nicely done, and so forth. It's just a, a really sweet piece. And uh, it did well, it brought $930. But um, I, I, I think it was worth it. But then again, I like carved wooden stuff. So uh, um, <laughs> I have a natural prejudice for it. But that, I, I, th I still think that was a, an awfully nice piece. And I, I think it was a good thing to buy. Uh, all right, and then over here to this, Joni's up in Canada had the sale with the double, uh, the pair of uh, Kung Shi jars. Um, and we talked about these and we thought they would do very well. And they did, they brought over $15,000. Uh, for the pair, but it, it, but it, in fairness, there was another pair of jars that sold recently at one of the big auction houses, very similar, um, um, that sold for about that amount as well. So uh, I, I think that the, the market is consistent at this point. But these were good looking jars and they were the decoration, uh, the Kung Shi blue and white decoration on these was quite tight, nicely done. Uh, the jars were beautifully potted, very strongly potted and of good shape and i forget how big these were they they were bigger than they, they when i first saw them i thought they were about six inches tall because of the shape but these were bigger hold on um i don't remember what but the size 18 inches in height that's right they're much bigger than they look um 
This is what, when they took the pictures of this, they should have put something in the image with it to show you how big they are. Um, uh, not that it affected the price. The price was absolutely fine. But um, it's always a good idea to do it. These were big jars. And somebody bought them for a little over seven thousand, eight thousand, almost eight thousand dollars each, which I think is perfectly fine. I, I think they're very nice. All right, and then this, the Kutani uh, Tatsa, uh, the footed compote. There it is. Um, this was nice, and I, I, know, I know there's a number of you out there that collect Kutani. So now every time I see a good piece of Kutani, I'm going to throw it in for you because uh, I like Kutani too. I, I own a, a bit of it. And uh, this was a beautifully enameled example, uh, like a like a like a fine painting, uh, very tightly drawn, beautiful uh, uh, accent here with the red flower at the bottom. Loved the facial expression of the two ladies, and then you have this elegant, you know, very high quality terrace with um, a stone foundation looking out over the bay and so forth. Just a, a beautiful scene. And uh, it went for $453, which is absolutely what it's, you know, right in that range is a perfectly fair price. Um, and and if, uh, some, some of these times these pieces make six, $700. I think 450 was perfectly fine. Nice looking porcelain. And then this, the uh, uh, this the, this was the plate. They, they, I guess the seller was a little confused about w whether it was Chinese or Japanese, because they put it in the description. Uh, but it is 18th century. But it was a Kangxi Amari dish, and it had some damage. It had a crack through the middle. Um, you can see it um, right here, running right through it. Uh, but it's still an interesting example, and I, I thought it would do pretty well, and it did. Still brought $254 because it's a, a bit unusual, and the diameter was, what, eight inches? A little over, almost nine inches in diameter. It wasn't big, but it was good looking, and uh, if it weren't cracked, it would probably, would, you know, again, it would be in the, you know, the $1,000 range or more. Uh, so that, that, was, that was perfectly fine, $254. And then there's this, the, uh, uh, the, the, the seller listed this as, uh, uh, well, basically Chin Lung period, uh, circa 1780. Um, I don't think so. I think this is a Kang Shi example. And uh, the, the price in the end was very good. It brought $305. It was about nine inches or so in diameter, as I recall. Um, there's a photo, oh, that's right. He put the, he, this is one of these guys that puts the ruler in the picture, nine and a half inches in diameter. Um, it just as a, as a hint, um, um, because not everybody notices the ruler when they look at the photos, um, because they could look they're almost like they're in the way. Um, when you, when you do your descriptions, write out the, the 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 diameter, the size of it. Don't make your don't make your prospective customers to go and try to figure out how big something is. Just just quickly add the line. It'll take take two seconds, and it'll it'll help you. All right. But anyway, it brought three hundred and five dollars, which is perfectly good price. And then there was this. This was nice. This was the Antique Coop um, in Southboro again had this uh, or Antique Co-op. It was a very large rose mandarin platter, uh, oval platter. It was almost 17, 18 inches in length uh, and very fine quality decoration. Really nice. Lots of gilding in the hair. It's got, it's got the, the, the bird and branch borders uh, going around it. Here it is. But lots going on and, and quite large and, and notice the gilding all the gilding is in place and the gilding goes first when a plate is heavily used That's the first thing to rub off is the gilding and this one has uh, good gilding even on the rims and the back of it looks absolutely fine It's interesting on this one You can even see when they when they pot these and and they put them on a table it has a, they put it on a cloth and um, uh, the, the cloth is like a, like a, like a, a burlapy material so they can work the piece and then it just, they just peel it off. And in this one, you can actually see um, the, uh, uh, the pattern from the uh, cloth is still there, which is sort of, if you've ever had one of these, you wonder what that is, that's what it is. It's, it's because they, they put it on a cloth, a flat, they lay it flat on a table and they work it and you end up with this cloth bottom. All right, now, how did that do it? Like, oh, well, it brought $1,275, which is a strong price. But again, maybe export wares seem to be taken off again. Uh, you never know. And uh, I don't know why that's popping. There we go. Uh, there was this, a uh, Chinese Famille Rose dishes inscribed. Uh, these are late Qing, Tung Chi to the end of the century uh, dishes, but nicely painted, um, um, uh, sort of in a, a Quan Zhang pattern with inscri inscription, colophons, poems, and so forth, shaped rims. These are quite, quite good, really quite good. This one, I like the, this one with the prunus blossom trees. Uh, I, I like this a lot. And... Um, 
it ended up selling the pair ended up selling for four hundred and forty nine dollars which is fine um, they're inscribed good quality artwork 19th century and then this the uh, robe this I think was sort of a bargain of the week it needs a cleaning uh, this was a but a very nice uh, ladies 19th century silk robe with these uh, uh, rondelles of flowers and so forth it seems to have a little dirt or staining down in here um, but I think a good textile conservator for a hundred dollars could probably clean that hundred hundred and fifty dollars could clean this up for you quite successfully uh, there it is there's a little bit of yellowing um, and I don't think that that might well it might be from um, air it could be air and it's just surface and it'll come off do not ever try to clean silk yourself <laughs> um, pay someone to do it that's that's useful to it but this looks like something got on it and I, I have a feeling of, they can test it and a lot of that would probably come off and look very different so these Chinese robes once you clean them in the hands of a good textile conservator the colors really pop off of them they look great but someone bought this for $560 which was a very good buy um, uh, uh, we've seen these same robes in the past routinely sell for $1,600 to um, oh, $2,500 typically. So there you go. So that, that, but that, it's still a good robe, and uh, I like it when people get a great deal. Uh, and then what's coming up, there's uh, still some things uh, we're gathering together to add to this week to the newsletter page on bid amount. But um, uh, some of the things we already have queued up, this is actually on there right now. It, we put it on there a week ago. It closes tomorrow, though. It's a very nice um, uh, Wanli Kendi. Um, it's a good one. It has the horse pattern, the, 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 the descending horses. Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, there it is. You know, they put illustrations to books in there. Okay, there we go. Crack wires. Uh, and and there, is, there it is. Uh, it's only up to $605. It should bring, it should bring typically, these bring twelve to 1500 roughly. Uh, so expect it if you're bidding on this. Don't be surprised if it jumps up there. Uh, but, it, but it's a good example. And it was nicely photographed. The guy takes, this guy takes good pictures. This is ceramics and collectibles uh, that has this up. The uh, Shangri-La guys over in the Netherlands. Uh, very reliable dealers. And um, you know, and they also have this up, this Kosametsuki Tianchi to Transcend Period Literati Landscape Dish. Uh, nice example. It's got some uh, lines in the glaze up top. Up here, you can see them. Um, a lot of that would come out with the little hydrogen peroxide soaking for a week. But uh, anyway, the blue looks nice. Very classic. Um, and it's up to $94. It'll probably bring two or 300 at the end, maybe a little more. But good looking and, and a, a nice example. And uh, then over to this. Now, this this is this is, seems to be going a little bit under the radar. Uh, um, they, 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 this is a nice piece of crackleware, a nice piece of celadon, early celadon, sort of a stoneware body. So it's probably Yuan Dynasty um, around that period. I haven't spent a lot of time looking at it. I just know that it's an old one. Uh, here's the interior to it. It's got a chip. It's got that gray. When you see this gray stoneware, um, uh, they tend to be pretty early. And uh, here it is, very evenly glazed, nice color, nice crackle, and um, it's only up to $163, all right? And it is, uh, how big is this? Ooh, lots of, ooh, here we go, nice layout. Um, bowl is five and a half inches in diameter. So it's, it's right, right there, it's the standard size, uh, and it should bring eight to $1,200 anyway. But uh, we'll see. So if you've been eyeballing this and wondering if it's a copy or not, because a lot of fakes of these around, this isn't a fake. This is the real thing, in my opinion. And uh, then over here to this. This is uh, a seller um, I, I happen to know up in uh, Marblehead, Matthew. Um, he has a, an antique shop up there, and they sell very nice interior design stuff and decorative stuff, uh, nice fabrics, he and his wife. And um, they have this up. The, 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 the username is Room Tonic. And he has two um, gravy boats up this week. Both of them are, uh, this is an 18th century example, and that's an 18th century example. And both of them are based on English silver forms. And they would sometimes take um, a, a, a wood carving, they would carve a piece of wood in this shape based on a silver form in England and ship it to China and they would manufacture them in porcelain and then decorate them however you wish. So here you have one done in underglazed blue and here you have one done in Famille Rose. 
Um, and uh, uh, they're, they're very nice. I, I happen to like these a lot. Uh, so you, those will be on the newsletter page. And um, then this, the Saladon um, platter. Now, he's erroneously dated this as Ming. This is not a Ming platter. This is an 18th century platter. And it's sort of of the same school as the, uh, the, the green jar we saw at the very, very beginning. Um, this one. They're kissing cousins, all right? Uh, there. And uh, as I, I mentioned in the, the beginning, is it has the, the, this brown, the, 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 that jar had the, that brown base. Well, this is what the bottom of these look like. They put this, uh, this uh, dressing on, this iron-based dressing. And uh, there's the side of the foot, sort of darkish here, like we saw in that pot. This is also from that same period. This is a nice 18th century plate. Uh, it is not Ming, though. Uh, it's going to be in the newsletter, so, so keep that in mind. But it is, it is absolutely an 18th century example, and it is uh, just a hair under 12 inches in diameter. It's about 11, inches, 11, or t uh, 11 and a quarter inches wide. Looks like it's a nice condition. Uh, the, the, the estimate, uh, the, the bidding is right now, it's only up to $7.50. It should bring three to 500 uh, so, um, uh, you know, if you think of a bidding on it, knock, that's, that's sort of the range I think you're going to, it should be worth. Uh, but a good looking piece, and that will be in the newsletter this week. This is also going to be in there this week. And if you are a Yi Xing collector, uh, you know what this is right away. It is a, a, a piece of a, a Chinese pewter that's been inscribed, shaped into the form of a teapot, given a jade uh, handle, um, uh, a lid handle, and spout. And uh, these are very collectible. This one is signed. Uh, you can go and try to look up that maker. Um, uh, I don't know if the liner is intact or not. I assume it is. Uh, but if you're thinking of bidding on this, contact the seller and ask them if the liner has any cracks or damage in it. All right. The difference is, is if it doesn't, this is a $1,600 to $2,400 teapot. If it has a crack in the liner, then it's worth around uh, eight to twelve hundred. It cuts the price almost in half. Uh, so you want to find out if the liner is in good condition. But right now it's got four days to go. It's up to only one hundred and seventy dollars. But a lot can happen in in a few days, as you all know. But uh, this this is a particularly nice example, and um, the, there is a this is a big collector market for these, and it's a fully inscribed example. All right, and then over to this a Wang Huali brush pot. Um, I'm not sure it's Wan Wali. It might be, but I don't see the graining of it. But it's a nice old pot. This is not a new copy, in my opinion. This this looks completely legitimate. Um, looks like it's probably a 19th century example, possibly 18th century. Uh, but it's got the little feet on it, and and the way it's done under here, and the shape. Um, the shape they did both in the 18th and 19th century. My gut on this is that it's probably early 19th century. But nice example, it needs oiling, it needs cleaning, it needs a friend. Boy, this thing needs a new home because uh, wherever it's been, they haven't taken very good care of it. Uh, so it needs, it needs to get a little, uh, uh, little oil on it, a little furniture oil, and um, help it get some life. And the color, this color will really come out. All right. It's up to only $24. It closes on Thursday of next week. It'll be on the newsletter page. It should bring two or $3,000, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, he's dated at 18th or early 19th century. That's fair. That's a, that's a perfectly good. Oh, it's a state consigner selling this down in Florida. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're 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 pretty knowledgeable. It seems I've seen we've we've had their stuff on here a number of times. This is a nice um, nice looking pot. Okay, they guaranteed to be Juan Wally. Then it may be the light. It may just be the fact that the wood is the wood needs to be oiled up a little bit to bring the color out. Because uh, I don't see the the Juan Wally eyes, the swirls that you typically see. But they're guaranteeing it. It's Juan Wally, so um, three to five thousand, if that's the case. All right, and then this, the 18th century pair of uh, porcelain chargers, and uh, these are nice. These are absolutely great quality, and it's a pair, uh, great pair. And uh, uh, they have an old chin lung stick, and they were sold by um, um, by Marchance in London, and it's it, many probably many years ago because I don't think they've been. Well, maybe they still sell some of the, the export. They well, that's right. They have an export. Um, Samuel Marchat, they have a, uh, they, they started doing uh, export porcelain a couple of years ago. Um, it's being run by one of the, the granddaughters or the daughter, I'm trying to think. 
But anyway, uh, these are nice. These are really good. If you're looking for a pair of really nice platters, uh, these are they. And uh, how big are they? Um, they're eight inches wide and um, six inches tall. So they're, they're not enormous, but very fine quality very fine quality and they're up to they, they close it closes next thursday roundhouse antiques is selling these um they're from the tacoma washington area um it's up to 850 it'll get up there at the end I, and i expect these will bring somewhere in the oh probably in the in the 350 to maybe 550 dollar range maybe more uh but these are uh, super fine um chinese export wares the late 18th century very very nice and it's interesting because they have two patterns they have this honeycomb pattern on the inside and then they have another pattern of like these diamond shaped lasange figures on the outside separated by a spear border very very nice and um let's see what else let the page load there we go there is an iron red um, memorial fitzhugh terrine and uh cover um, this is uh, Miguel Ari has this. Miguel Ari's got a huge amount of stuff on this week. Um, I think I think we're probably going to uh, uh, about about uh, uh, have about maybe thirty items from him this week. Um, he's over in the UK. He's a very active dealer. He gets good things. We we always show his stuff because he he seems to be completely on the up and up with descriptions. But this is a really fine, really fine orange Fitzhugh comes in many qualities. There's lower quality and higher quality. This is high quality. All right, the decoration on this is outstanding. Um, and, I can't, and I can't emphasize that enough. There's a tiny bit of wear on the top of the finial, that's nothing. Um, but the, but the, when you look at the decoration, the border decorations, um, extremely detailed, very, very detailed. And um, right now it's up to just $142. It closes next week uh, and it sh how big is this thing? Hold on a second. Um, did you not put the dimensions in? Am I missing it here? Um, I don't see any dimensions. That's strange. Anything in there? No. Nope. Any rulers in the pictures? Uh, I think it's probably a standard size terrine. It doesn't look like a sauce terrine or something proportionally. So assume it's 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 uh, oh, 12 to 14 inches in length. But I would, you might want to contact him and ask him how big it is. But in, in any event, th this, this terrine should bring $800 to $1,200 by the time it's done. Maybe more, because the details are really, really fine. And if you, if you have somebody chasing this that, that already has the under tray of very fine quality um, orange fits you, um, they might pay a, a super premium to get this because it's going to go with their tray. So keep that in mind. And then last and but not least is the Laughing Buddha. Uh, this is a particularly good one. It's a Republic period example, and it's got the, uh, the mark on it of uh, uh, Zhu Mao Yi Zhao. And that is a, a well-known Ching uh, factory. They've made lots of these, and everybody collects them. <laughs> um, they are very popular. And if you check prices on, on these uh, uh, Buddha figures, again, you can see the cloth pattern. There it is again on the bottom. They still do, were doing it in the Republic period. Um, this one's about 11 inches tall. And uh, typically, these end up selling somewhere in the, on the very, very low side, they sell for maybe 11 or $1,200, but they can go up much higher. They can go up to uh, uh, two or 3,000. Um, with the right crowd. So keep that in mind. Right now it's just up to a couple of hundred dollars. Or I think it's up to $900, but it's got a ways to go yet. It just was posted. That'll be in the newsletter this week. All right. So that's about it. Um, there's not much else uh, going on. Uh, if, you, if you enjoy the video, subscribe. Uh, we'll be back uh, next uh, week with some more. We're going to do the interview with, with uh, uh, our friend over in the UK with David, and uh, we'll, we'll have that posted sometime during the week. And uh, thanks for watching and have a great weekend, everyone. All right. Leave a comment, thumbs up and all that good stuff. Thank you. Bye bye.